Like Maharaj used to say all the time, if you want to put fresh milk in a cup, you have to wash it first, otherwise the milk will turn sour. So this path is a path of cleaning that cup of our own hearts to hold that, the nectar of love. Welcome to the Krishna Das Pilgrim Heart Hour. In this podcast, Krishna Das shares his warm hearted and down to earth path to the divine. If you are interested in supporting Krishna Das's podcast, please go to BeHereNowNetwork.com slash KD. Ji Hanuma Ji 
1970, maybe late September, probably October, uh, I had just arrived in India in late August, I think. And uh, by September, by early September, we, we were up in the mountains. Actually, we came, I first saw Maharaji on September 13th, 1970. Now, one night in October, I was walking around the lake, the, the town of Nanital. Nani means eyes, and Tal is lake. And it's a very sacred place to the goddess. Uh, for many, many thousands of years, it's a, it was a secret place. And uh, only certain people knew about it. The English... Uh, had heard about it, but they couldn't find it. You know, they didn't have drones in those days to look around, or helicopters, or planes. And uh, so what happened was some English general or colonel or some official 
took a big stone, like a very heavy stone, and he told his servant to put it on his head. And he said, if you take that stone off before you lead me to this, this place, this mysterious place, Nanital, I'm going to shoot you. So the servant led him to the town, the sacred space, which would, at that time was probably just an ancient temple. Maybe some small ashrams and things like that, small monastery. So, um, so this night, we, we were staying in Nanital, and Maharaji sent us to stay at the hotel of his devotees there, the Shah family. And um, he didn't let us come to the temple every day. Sometimes he said, come in three days. Sometimes he said, come in four days. So all that time we were sitting around, you know, we didn't know what to do. But I guess, you know, he was working on us slowly, getting us, uh, preparing us and cleaning us, cleaning, cleaning our shit up, you know, so we could actually spend time with him without exploding. And anyhow, so one night I was walking around the lake by myself and I was just passing by this, this temple to the goddess, the 90 Devi temple. And there was this chanting coming from inside. And I stopped. I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. I was transfixed. I was, I, I could not move. I just was, I had never heard anything like it in my life. And I was just standing there. I don't know how long I was standing. And then some Indian guy um, was going into the temple and he looked at me and he laughed and he grabbed me and he dragged me in with him, you know. And he, I sat down and there were a bunch of guys in there singing and chanting. And one of the things they chanted over and over again was this, I don't even know, tell you the truth, I don't even really know what they were singing. I later... I later realized they were singing the Hanuman Chalisa. But there's a way of singing these longer prayers where between each verse, you add one special verse over and over. So, so they would sing a few verses of the Chalisa and then add this other verse. And that was this thing that sounded something like Bhaji Loji Hanuman. I have no idea what it really was. I never asked. I don't know why I never asked. But I never asked. So that was the first, my ex first experience of chanting in India. And all the lights went on. You know, I just knew this is, this was something I could really do. One of our issues is that we can't give ourselves completely to whatever it is we're doing. There's always some chatter going on, some stuff about it, or inability to concentrate, or neurotic nonsense about whatever it is. But I knew that chanting, this was for me. And so from that time on, whenever I heard any chanting, I, I just went there. And at, at the hotel we stayed at, in the back of the hotel, it was on a hill. So behind the hotel, up above, there was a, a small uh, group of houses. Some of the Muslim folks who lived there in the town lived in this. And on Thursday night, they used to have this chanting. And the only way I could listen to it was to stand on a bucket, an upside down bucket. So my head could be near the window in the back of the, the bathroom. And I used to stand there for hours and listen to the chanting. I was really lucky. My 
Maharaj, he always said to us, from the repetition of the name, everything is accomplished. This is a, an extraordinary statement. It's not a philosophical statement. It's not a big fancy teaching. It's a very simple statement coming from a being who is fully realized, fully liberated, beyond the beyond. And he's so far beyond the beyond that he always spoke very simply. And he said, from the constant repetition of the name, everything is achieved, everything is brought to fullness and completion. And he said, even at the beginning, if you're not, if your devotion is not really sincere, if you don't really feel it, he said, through the constant, through the continual repetition of the name, your thoughts, your mind, your heart will be purified. And then the real then you'll be able to really enter into the practice in a deeper way. And eventually, the real call will come from our hearts. And the real Ram will come. The real Lord, the real God, the real reality will come to us. And we'll be saved, we'll be redeemed at that moment, freed. And he said, in the meantime, even if you don't feel it, even if you're tired, if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're distracted, just, you've got to do something. If you don't do it, then what, he said. The practice itself will transform us. Uh, somebody's asking about if Maharaji ever spoke about the Bhagavad Gita. You know, I don't remember any talk about it. Uh, that I, I, you know, one time Mr. Tuari told me, he said, uh, <clears throat> You know, that one of the main teachings of the Gita is nishkam karma, which means desireless action. That means that we act without any motive of our own, any agenda of our own. So, and this is a way, this is a, a path, a spiritual path of action, but desireless action. In other words, we're not, we're, there's no selfish motivation involved. So just keep that in mind. So one day, uh, Maharaji looked at Tawari and he said, you're a Brahmin. Your Brahmins are supposed to know everything. He said, uh, what did Krishna teach in the Gita? So Tawari knew it was a setup, you know, but he said, nishkam karma. Maharaji said, hap! Nishkam karma, only God can do ish, nishkam karma, which is a really far out statement. It's not that that can't happen through us, but if we have any sense of being the doer, then it's not desireless, it's not nishkam. It can be good service, it can be helpful service, it could be positive action, but that's different than desireless action. And uh, <clears throat> you know, Tuari had a very special relationship with Maharaji. One time he, Tuari came to the temple and from, as soon as he entered into the temple from across the courtyard, Maharaji was sitting outside. From across the courtyard, Tuari started yelling at Maharaji saying, why did you drag me here? I was happy at home. I had no intention to come. Why did you drag me here? And Maharaj said, I dragged no one. 
but we've been together for 83 lifetimes. It had to happen. <laughs> wow. That's big time stuff. So, no, I don't remember anything specially, but I don't remember a lot, you know. Really, Maharaji didn't teach like that too much. I mean, he didn't... He, he, I'm sure he mentioned it. Everybody talks about the Gita, but for Maharaji, Hanumanji and the Ramcharitamanas was the main focus of his... That's how he transmitted himself. That's what he was surrounded himself with the, the, the Ram Charitamanas, the Tulsi Das Ramayana. And on Tuesdays, Hanuman's day, he often had, always had, when he was there, the, the chapter about Hanuman recited out loud. And, and when they recite this, it's all musical. It's not just, you know, reading. It's musical. It's so beautiful. I live in the American Southwest and I love your Cocopelli stickers on your harmonium. Is there a story behind why you chose them? Some sweet little girl, like a five or six year old girl, maybe even younger, came up one night after the kirtan and put them on my harmonium. <laughs> I think that's what happened. And I left them there. What's on the other side of the dark night of the soul? Well, ask Jim Morrison. You know, you have to break on through to the other side. Uh, the, the other side of the dark night of the soul is the light. After the soul p passes through, the, the despair of not being able to do anything to save itself it finally surrenders. The ego finally surrenders. And that's when the light really shines. For devotional, the devotional path, they describe the surrender is not just the goal, but it's the path itself. So, and surrender happens by grace. And we prepare ourselves to, for that grace to manifest by these practices which clean our heart, which clean our karmas, which free us from negativity and, and our own stories and our own limitations that we do to ourselves and the way we treat ourselves and others. That's how we prepare. Uh, Maharaj used to say all the time, if you want to put fresh milk in a cup, you have to wash it first, otherwise the milk will turn sour. So this path is a path of cleaning the cup of our own hearts to hold that, the nectar of love. <clears throat> Is there some evil in us? The reason I ask is that ultimately or not, cruelty is also there in this conflict in Ukraine. How to see good in everything? I don't know about the word evil, but if you call evil selfishness and greed and violence and aggression and anger and viciousness, well then certainly that's in us. There's no question that the human heart is full of all that shit. Every single one of us has all that stuff, ultimately because we're, our ego is protecting itself from other people and making sure it has enough what it wants. And it's as if happiness is in a, a limited quantity and that if, if somebody else has it, there's less for you, which is ridiculous. But that's how we act. And that's, if you want to call it evil, it's what, it's all the things we do to, 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 uh, to keep this, to feed these hungry desires at the, at, 
at, at the expense of anyone and everything in, in our way. So, I don't know if that's evil, but it certainly causes, it's certainly very, very negative karma. Very hurtful, very painful, creating more suffering. I mean, who, what's the sense of all this, anyway? But I don't, uh, there's not, it's not that there's some, that they were intrinsically evil. Actually, it's the opposite. We're intrinsically good. Our, our essence, our Buddha nature is within everyone. The soul is absolutely pure. It's untouched by all this stuff. But we don't, we don't live there. We don't know how to move into that realm within us. We're attached to our, our desires. We're attached to our, our sense of being separate. We're attached to our stuff. We're, all that, that keeps us spinning and keeps us turned outward. You have told the story about how Sri Ramakrishna said that every repetition of the name is like a seed. Is the seed is it, is the seed a mental repetition of a mental repetition equal to a verbal one? Yes, it's it's the same. What might be different is your your the ability the, the how much you're actually paying attention. It's harder to pay attention to the mental japa, the mental repetition, because it's more subtle, it's quieter. It's, you're easily distracted. When you're singing out loud or chanting out loud, you're using your breath, you're using your voice, your body, your ears are hearing it. You know, this vibration, actual sound vibration. So that gives you more to hang your attention on. So usually, they say to start that way and gradually, as you develop the ability to pay attention, you'll also be able to, you'll, you'll be able to develop mental uh, japa, internal japa, internal repetition of the name, and be able to really be with it instead of fluttering around. But the, the repetition is the same. What's different is how, how much, the, it's the, the amount of attention that, is, is, is how the seed is planted. Is it just thrown out? Like, Sri Ram Jairam, what's your motivation? Are you sincerely in the practice? Are you paying attention? Is your, are you motivated to, to, to really be there? Otherwise, it's just you throwing the seeds in the air and anything could happen. Or are you planting each seed and taking care of it and watering it and making sure it's okay and then putting a, a fence around it so the cows don't eat it? That's the difference, you know, the motivation, the aspiration, the intention, and the, the amount of uh, dedication you have to the practice, to the moment, is what determines how the seed is planted. Why did Maharaji crumple up the Vinaya Chalisa when Prabhudat, uh, when the man who wrote it presented it to him? I don't know. <laughs> it could be because he was already, he knew he was leaving. And, you know, he, towards, in that last period of time, short period of time before he left, I don't know exactly how, months, people would come and, and he would say, there's no Baba here. Go see Hanuman. Or Neem Karoli Baba's gone. He had actually left already. I mean, the body was just there, but he was not in it most of the time that last six months or the last four or five months. I wasn't there at that time. He had sent me home in March. And then next spring and summer, he was up in Kenchi. And it was very different than it had been for all those years. He stopped coming out to, to be with people too much. They, they, he was just so absorbed in bliss and in God. He was just unable to move. And whatever that Neem, whoever Neem Kuroli Baba, that, that 
conglomeration of, of stuff had already dissolved and, and, and the body was just hanging around and was soon to go. So that's, maybe that's why he just did that. I don't know. How do we balance ourselves in day-to-day -day life with universal and relative reality? You mean like ultimate and relative reality? Well, you just, when you see a stop sign, you stop. When the red light turns red, you stop. When it turns green, you go. You don't, you don't think, oh, there's no birth, there's no death, it, you know, and walk out and play in traffic. There were rules in relative reality that there were reasons because you can lose your life, you could hurt yourself, you could hurt others. There's certain rules, the way it works. Re relative reality functions a certain way. Ultimate reality is beyond that, but it's not somewhere else. It's right here, but we are not aware of that. And so, we need to pay attention to the way things work here. For instance, in ultimate reality, there's no karma any longer. There are no karmic agendas. We are freed from the propulsion of our own karmas. That's liberation. But in relative reality, we are not free from, from our karmic propulsion and the, the, we think we're making, we think we have free choice. We don't have free choice. The choices we make are programmed responses. It's like when somebody says, I can smoke if I want. I can smoke. Sure you can. But why would you smoke if you know you're going to die a painful death, unable to breathe, on oxygen machines, clinging to, to the life, you know, can't get any oxygen. Why would you do that to yourself? You wouldn't if you weren't propelled by self-destructive tendencies, by negative tendencies. But it doesn't dawn on that. I, no, I can do whatever I want. I can, do, I can do this, I can do that. You can, but doing that is not only the result of karmas, but it's also creating more negative karmas. Why would we do that if we actually had free choice? Choice that was based on reality. So, in relative reality, in this world, in samsara, we need to create, we need to cultivate positive karmas, sattvic karmas. in order to alleviate the suffering inside of us and around us. And the repetition of the name is the most sattvic, the, the purest form of karmic action. <laughs> How did Maharaji assign names to devotees? I, I have no idea. When, when, uh, one Western devotee mo mo left India and moved to uh, Australia, and then she and her husband got pregnant, and they, they wrote to Maharaji for a name. And he said, Kutkabutka, which means like hocus pocus, I think, in Hindi. Everybody, and all the Indian people, oh, Baba, you can't do that. And then he said, don't you see, don't you see? The baby's not born yet and they're asking for a name. They're trying to get me to say if it's a boy or a girl. But I don't know, he, he gave names, I don't know how he gave names. He looked at me finally, first, the first name I had was Driver because he took Ram Dass's keys away and gave them to me for the Volkswagen bus. So after many months of being driver, I, I kind of gave up and I said, well, I guess this is it. Everybody else has Indian names and I'm driver. And then that morning, right after I wrote that in my diary, he called me in 
He looked at me and said, Arjun, nay, Krishna, nay, Krishna Das. I said, Krishna Das? You know, come on, I'm a Hanuman guy. What is this Ram guy? What's this Krishna stuff? And he just laughed. He said, no, 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 it's okay. Hanumanji served Krishna too. And he did. There's a, in the, in the war, the, the Mahabharata war, I don't know if you know the whole story, but God, Krishna, was Arjuna's charioteer in the war. He, he told both sides that he would not fight. But long story, literally a very long story. So anyway, he was acting as Arjuna's charioteer. And after the war was over, uh, Arjun, uh, Krishna says to Arjuna, he said, every day of this war, I have gotten off the chariot first and helped you off because that's my role as the charioteer. But today, you get off first and run as fast as you can away from the chariot. So Arjuna did, he jumped off and he ran away and then Krishna stepped off the chariot and it blew up in a million pieces, it exploded. And there was a white flag on the chariot with a red flying monkey on the flag. So what happened is as soon as Krishna got off the chariot, the monkey flew out of the flag and disappeared in the sky and the chariot exploded. And Krishna explained to Arjuna, didn't you ever wonder why your chariot was never destroyed, why you never had to replace it in the battles, just like other people had to replace it? It was because Hanuman himself sat in the flag and protected and absorbed all the missiles. You know, the way they fought in those days was very different. They fought with mental power. They would shoot an arrow, but they would have a mantra with that arrow. And depending on the amount of concentration a warrior had, that's how powerful that missile would be. Amazing. They, they actually had like nuclear, they could split the atom with their minds, with these mantras, with these powerful missiles. But Hanuman absorbed all of those missiles because he can. He's supreme. If you wanted to offer Maharaji a gift of fruit or candy, what would you choose? Did he have favorite things? You know, uh, if, if you're talking about actually on the physical plane, we used to bring him soft apples because he only had like three or four teeth. <laughs> so he couldn't eat hard things. He could only eat soft things. So we might get a soft apple and, and cut it in pieces and offer it to him. We used, usually we just offered the apples and he would distribute them to other people. But one of my guru brothers, he noticed that the Indian people used to actually peel the apple, cut it into pieces and offer it to Maharaji on a plate. So he decided he was going to do that. So one day he prepared, he cleaned the apple and peeled it, cut it into pieces. And he went into Maharaji's room and he offered this, these cut pieces of the apple. <laughs> To Maharaji and he said that the look on Maharaji's face when he saw this Westerner doing something like the Indians he said the look was as if your dog sat up and started talking to you <laughs> uh, yeah he was uh, Maharaji was always going oh my god these Westerners he was going uh, you yeah. know Yeah, there's a story about Maharaji uh, making someone recite the Gita by putting his foot on the guy's head. And the guy had never, heard, he'd never read the Gita. He didn't even speak Sanskrit. He couldn't read Sanskrit. But it was the, uh, it was the Pujarian. It was, it was in Brindavan. And uh, it was, uh, he had made this wonderful, beautiful, but unlettered, uneducated young man, the Pujari, in order to fuck with the heads of the Brahmin pundits who thought they owned the world. 
So he, so they, these pundits then complained to Mr. Jaipuria, the rich man who sponsored the temple and built the temple. So Jaipuria came to the temple to, you know, to see this pujari, this young pujari, because these other people were poisoning his mind against this young man. And so he was challenged to read the Gita, to recite the Gita. And so Maharaji put his toe on the boy's head or his foot, I forget exactly for a moment, on the boy's head, or he covered his head with his blanket for a moment. And then he said, go ahead, recite. And the boy recited from the Gita by heart in Sanskrit. And of course, it was all Maharaji's leela because he didn't know anything. He didn't even know what happened. So, yeah. <laughs> Somebody writes, I made it. I want to ask, how do we practice surrender and peace in a time of great uncertainty? Well, that's the $64,000 question. It used to be the show on TV growing up called the $64,000 question. Uh, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing here. We're practicing. We're trying to find peace inside. Even in the face of uncertainty and anguish and suffering. And we're not doing that to protect ourselves from that pain. Ultimately, we're doing it so we can help and be of service to those in pain. But if we are bleeding, we can't stop someone else's bleeding. Very well, anyway, we can try, but we'll bleed to death too. So we're trying to find that place in us so we can help others. So we can live in this world in a good way, not just ourselves, but all of us. Every time we come back from dreamland to the name while we're chanting, that's something we've done, not just for ourselves, but for every being that's suffering. Everything we're doing is to try to find a way to make this world a better place, not just for ourselves or our near and dear ones, but for everyone. So, do some practice and become, learn to be a good human being. Try to find out what that means to you. How do you believe these stories, like superhuman stuff, as we were not there ever if it happened? I don't know. I believe it. I believe it because I was with Maharaji and I experienced directly superhuman stuff, miracles. I, I experienced love beyond anything I could have dreamt of. When we sang to Maharaji, we felt God. We felt real love. We felt something very deep and special. When we were with him, we experienced things that we had never experienced before. We were freed temporarily from our stuff and we were led into the room where love lives. And based on my experiences with Maharaji, and in India and with other great saints. If one thing is true, then other things could also be true. That's the way it works for me. That's all I can say about that. How do I chant the Hanuman Chalisa 108 times? Are there any rules? Is there anything that you want to say how to do this? I'm planning to go to Kakuri Ghat to do this. Oh, very nice. Kakuri Ghat is such a beautiful place. Well, if in India, I mean, for Americans, I say, just sit your ass down and do it. Make a little altar, offer some fruit. But if you're going, you know, to India, to Kakurigat, there is Hanuman Temple there. 
I would definitely bring some some prasad for for the temple. Uh, I don't know where you'll sit, whether you'd sit by the Hanuman Mandir or sit over closer to the river. There's a Shiva Lingam just down below by the closer to the river. That's a very powerful place. Sombari Baba, a great, great, great saint, uh, lived there for many years in the early 1900s. Um, I would say if you're in India, bring some ladus, make some offering and give your heart to it. I, I don't know of any, I was never told any rules, you know. Uh, I was just told that this was a practice that you could do and you can ask for a boon, a blessing. And then you ask for that, you, you know, you, you ask for that blessing and then you, you do the 108 repetitions of the Chilisa, Hanuman Chilisa. And you will get that blessing and that boon at the right time. That's my experience. It may not happen like this because maybe you're not ready for it to happen like this. But if you're sincere and you ask for something that's If you sincerely ask for something, you'll get it at the right time, if it's good for you. Maharaji will not give you things that are not good for you, no matter how many times you ask. So, okay, that's it. I think let's do a Bernice Chalisa tonight and we'll do the uh, the Hungry Hearts prayer at the beginning because because we wanted to, to, to dedicate the, the, the good vibes of our practice together to all beings who are suffering. They call that merit, the merit of the practice, the, the, good, the goodness that's generated by our practice. We offer that to all beings because people are hurting. We, we have to. If we're here, if we know anything about this stuff, if we know that there's a path if we know that there's something we can do to alleviate our own suffering, it's only because of the great beings that have gone before us, like I say every week or every time. We wouldn't know shit if it wasn't for them. So what can we do? We can also, also dedicate and offer ours, whatever we have to help everyone. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the great beings that went before us. And for those who come after us, it's the same. Sing it twice at the beginning and once at the end. Oh. Come on. 
Calling out to hungry hearts Everywhere through endless time You who wander, you who thirst I offer you this bold in mind Calling out to hungry spirits Everywhere through endless time Calling out to hungry hearts All the lost and the left behind Gather round and share this meal Your joy and your sorrow I make it mine Calling out to hungry hearts Everywhere through endless time You who wander, you who thirst I offer you this heart of mine Calling out to hungry spirits Everywhere through endless time Calling out hungry hearts All the lost and the left behind Gather round and share this meal Your joy and your sorrow I make it more. Iguru Charan Saroja Raja Nijamana Mukur Sudari Aranon Ragubar Vimala Jasu Jodayaka Kalachari Uddin Tanujan K Sumiram Bhavan Kumar Siaran Bala Buddhi Vidya Dehu Mohi Hara Ukalesa Bekar Siavara Ram Chanda Pada Jesharana Jaya Hanuman Gyana Vinasa Jaya Kapi Sati Hun Loka Puja Ramadurta Turta Baladam Anjani Put Pavana Suttana Mahavira Bikram Bajaran Matinavar Sumati Kesan Kanchanavarana Viraj Subesa Kanana Kundala Kunchita Kesan Atta Bajura Dvaja Bira Ande Munja Jane Usaj Shankara Suvan Kesari Nanda Teja Pratap Mahajagadunda Vidyavan Guni Atti Chatur Amakaja Karibe Oatur Prabhu Charitra Sunibe Khorasiya Ramalakana Sita Manabhasi Sukshma Rupa Dharasiya Hindekhava Pikata Rupa Dharalanka Jarava Dima Rupa Dharasura Sare Ramachandra Kika Jashawa Lai Sajeevan Akkanadiyai Shira Gubir Parashiura Lai Thagupati Kinhi Bohut Barai Tumma Mamma Priya Paratai Samabai Sahasabadan Tumaro Jasagao Asakai Shri Pati Kanta Laga Sanakadika Brahma Dimunisa 
Sharad, Sharad, Sait, Ahiz Makber, Yega Pal, Jahante Kabi Ko Bidda Kae Sake Kahante Tuma Upakar, Sugriva Inkin Rama Melay, Raja Paddin Maro Mantra Bibi Kishwara Bhai Sabha Jagajan Dukha Sahasra Jojana Parabhan Ilyo Thai Mudura Parajan Prabhu Mudrika Mele Mukamahi Chala Dilangi Gaya Achara Janahi Durga Makaja Jagata Kejete Sugama Nuga Tumare Tete Rama Duare Tumara Kawai Otana Agya Bina Peza Sab Sukalahe Tumari Sharana Tumara Chakahu Apana teja samaro ape Tinon loka hanka ten kampe Uta pesashan kattana hi ave Mahavir javanam suna Nase roga hare sabapir Japata nirantara hanumata vir Sankata te anuman churave Manakama bachana dhyana jolave Sabha pararamat pasvi raja Dina ke kaj sakal tuma saja Oraman orat joko elave Sove amit jivana palapave Chano yuga parata patuma He parasid jagata ujaya Sadhu santa ke tumarakavare Asura nekanda rama durai Ashta sindhi no nidhi ke data Asavara dina Jan ki mata rama rasayan Tumare paasa saddaro ho Raghupati ke daasa Tumare bhajana rama ko paavo Janam janam ke dukha bisarao Anta kala raghubaro pura jai Jahan janam mahar bhakt kahai Or devata chipta nadarai Hanumata se saro sukha kharai Sankata kate mite sabha peer Jo sumire hanumata balabir Jai 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 hanuman gosai Kropa karo guru deva ki nai Jo sat bar pat kar poe Chut hi bandhi maha sukho ho Oya pare hanuman chalis Oya siddhi saki gharis Tulasi das sada hari chair Ki jai na hurdaya mandir Avanatanaya sankhata harana Mangala murti rupsiya rama Rama lakana sita saita Hurdaya basa sura bhupa Sāvara rāma chandra pada jesharanam Mangala murti 
Arutanandan Sakala Amangala Mula Nekandan Amangala Murati Arutanandan Sakala Amangala Mula Nekandan Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram 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 Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Shri 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 Ram Je Ram Je Je Sita Ram 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 Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Calling out to hungry hearts Everywhere through endless time you who wander, you who thirst, I offer you this body mind. Calling out to hungry spirits everywhere through endless time. Calling out to hungry hearts, all the lost and the left behind. Gather round and share this meal, your joy and your sorrow, I make it mine. If we know anything about a path at all, if we know there might be a way to live in this world in a good way, with an open heart, without fear, it's only because of the great beings that have gone before us, out of their love, out of their kindness, they left some footprints for us to follow. So in the same way that they wish for us, in the same way that they wish for us, we wish that all beings everywhere, all of us, be safe, be happy, that all of us have good health and enough to eat. And may we all live in peace. And that ease of heart at ease of heart with whatever comes to us in life. Shanti, Shanti.